In the heart of the English countryside, there's an off-road marathon which tests athletes' physical ability, but ultimately refreshes the spirit too. If you're tired of treading the tarmac for your 26.2 miles, this is the event for you. It's tough, but it's a big breath of fresh air. Welcome to Heli Hansen, Beauty and the Beast. It's a multi-lap course here in West Wickham, so if you miss the fantastic scenery on the way around, you get the opportunity to have another look. And of course it means that you get to run the most painful bits over and over again, like this hill, which is nicknamed the Beast for a reason. Here's Rob Walker with what lies ahead. Well, there can't be many more stunning locations to take on a marathon than here at West Wickham Park. Built in the 18th century by Sir Francis Dashwood. Some fabulous architecture taking influences from Greece and Italy. And it includes, amongst other delights, a nine acre man made lake using water from the River Wye in the shape of a swan. All part of the appeal for those at the front and those just hoping to complete what for many is billed as the UK's toughest marathon. There's a little bit of something for everyone here. And one athlete stepping down in distance, not often you can say that about a marathon, is the ultra trail runner from Scotland, Matt Williamson. He's represented Great Britain over 100K. This for him is a much shorter, sharper outing. It's lovely, it looks uh, very nice. And as I say, never been around this part of the world before, so um, looking forward to seeing a bit more of it, but I'll be interested to see how I get on, because uh, certainly starting, uh, it's been a while since I've ran this distance and trying to get the pace right will be a, um, a slightly different challenge. While Williamson going for the full marathon, the favourite in the half marathon is Jules Roberts, an adventurer, an expedition guide in Iceland and Scandinavia. He should, on this 13-mile course, be very hard to beat. It's a really technical course. It's, it's really different, it's interesting, it's really challenging. Uh, you've got three big hills on it. Um, you've got a, a water section where you run through and you get wet feet, so you know that makes you, your trainers squelch for a while. Uh, and then you've got a real mixture of trails. You've got some which, uh, which are hard, hard packed. You've got others which are uh, on you know, difficult cambers uh, and lots of loose gravel too. So it makes for a really exciting, challenging course. And it's a great atmosphere with teams doing it. So you've got everyone who's just out running four miles all the way through to people who are doing the full 26.2. It's, it's beautiful. I mean, you're, again, you're, you're running through trees at some point. You're, you know, you're running then out in open countryside. You're running along these, these you know, beautiful scenes the beautiful house, um, so it's, uh, it's, it's great, you can take your mind off the suffering. Very different terrain for the man who's also worked as a pacemaker for the London Marathon. Some calm faces, but I'm sure some nervous moments for many. This is such a difficult course. This is a marathon and a race with a difference. So Roberts going straight to the front. You would perhaps expect that because he is going for the half marathon. But this is a race not necessarily for the quickest, but definitely for the toughest. Six laps for the full distance, three for the half marathon. And every single circuit for every athlete starts with a climb up the hill they call the beast. You certainly don't get your finisher's medal for free here. Roberts leading. Then in this second group, wearing the body pack on the right of frame, Scott Forbes leading the full marathon, and there's Matt Williamson. The Scott going well, just starting steadily. So too, Mayal Backhausen there, just going through shot in the lime green vest. The Australian could pose a danger here, but there's an awfully long way to go. You're never running on the flat here. You maybe have, um, for each lap, three, 400 metres of flat, and the rest you're either going up or down at an angle, so it's, uh, it's tough. Well, Jules Roberts seems to have the lead to himself here as far as the half marathon is concerned. But for the full distance, it's Scott Forbes leading with Williamson close behind. There's quite a lot of variation, lots of ups and downs, some nice variation in terrain going from um, some open grassy areas to some quite nice single track in the trails. So six laps and once I've done one lap, I, I know what's coming after that. 
Well, Williamson just biding his time. He's been passed there by Rob Patterson, but Patterson's in the half marathon. Williamson has been around a long time and he's in no mood to chase Scott Forbes down just yet. Forbes leads as they take on the Ford for the first time, but Mayal Backhausen's coming through. The Australian only got into running three years ago as a way of saving time and getting fit on his commute to work. Course looks pretty tough, so we'll, uh, we'll see how the day unfolds pretty much. Apparently it's the UK's toughest marathon, eh? so that's always pretty appealing. So you see what the UK's got, eh? Well, on to the second lap, and he's certainly finding out what the UK's got. There is Backhausen. He trails Scott Forbes. Roberts leading the half marathon, as he has done all the way from the beginning so far. Well, it's not just the Australian who's been drawn here to take on this fascinating race. We've got the half marathon and various relay competitors taking on the course here, trying to tame the beast. We are on the run to catch the beast today and we're doing a relay marathon today. It's all going to be good fun. Yeah. Loads yeah. of hills, water, mud. That beast doesn't know what's going to happen to him. <laughs> oh, yes. It's brutal. <laughs> It is brutal, but it's a lovely day. These two are the beauties, and I'm the beast. In that regard, it is right? a beast. <laughs> I think what they're alluring to are the hills and the wonderful views. Well, the course has also attracted three competitors from Norway. Three Heli Hansen designers have arrived here to see what all the fuss is about. I was actually here attending last year as well for the first time and I thought that the beauties were the women and the beast were the guys. <laughs> well, it can't be easy trying to look your best on a course as tough as this. And how about you? What do you feel about this race so far? Because you haven't done it before, have you? It's terrifying, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. I'm, I'm not a runner, but I'm going to do my best. Well, there's no doubt the scenery here in West Wickham Park is absolutely stunning, but as the laps tick by, these hills take on an agonising feeling of deja vu. How's it going? Good. Good. Look horrible, but I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. It's a bit of a killer route, though. <laughs> well, one man who definitely has the determination to tame the beast is Ibra Ali. Injured on active service with the Yorkshire Regiment, last year he completed the Walking with the Wounded Challenge over 330 kilometres to the South Pole in just 16 days. It was only after I was injured uh, back in 2007 that I was asked to look after the battalion's cross-country team and from there my actual, as you say, passion began. Uh, you know, just starting with 10 kilometre runs and, and before you know it, I'd, I'd sort of progressed to half marathons and marathons and, and this, to be honest, will be my first completely off-road trail race. Slightly nervous, not sure what to expect, but it should be good fun. Right. Yeah, bloody hard work those hills. Got to conserve your energy. Conserving energy is vital at the front of the field as well as in the main pack. There's Mayal Backhausen. He's just three seconds behind Scott Forbes. There is the commercial airline pilot. As a result of his job, he does training runs one week in Las Vegas, another week in Hong Kong. But it hasn't always been glamorous for the Loughborough University graduate. Tried to make the triathlon team for Great Britain for the Sydney Olympics. That didn't work out as a result of injuries. Now he finds himself as quite an accomplished ultra runner. But he almost didn't take his place in the starting lineup here at all. A really bad bike crash a couple of years ago almost resulted in paralysis. Seven operations to get him back on his feet so he does not lack for motivation here. He's just trailing Roberts, but Roberts remembers winning the half marathon. Forbes is in control of the full distance, but Mayal Backhausen is not too far behind him. Fascinating developments here in the midway stage of this marathon. Backhausen, a big, strong character, and he's the shadow that Forbes doesn't want. He just can't shake him off here. Tough climbs here and a tough opponent facing Scott Forbes. Every time he glances behind, the Australian is still there. Top of the beast, it's a huge relief when you get to this point here, when you know you're going to turn that coin. Now, let's see a smile. Hey, see? And go down the hill again. But the worst thing is, I did this last year and I know what it's like. You have to do it again. 
And again. And again. And again. It's fantastic. It's harder than Tough Mudder that I did earlier in the year, I can tell you that. <laughs> and the great news is, we've reached the top, so you can run downhill now. I didn't even notice that hill. Can you be here every lap, please? <laughs> See you on the next one. Well done. <laughs> I know. I'm a bit of a prima donna, you know. I don't get up for less than a marathon. And, uh, but this is brutal. <laughs> so, do you want to run with me a bit? How's the legs feeling? Yeah, all right. <laughs> Round again. Round again. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Good luck. See you later. On to lap four now for those at the front, and it's still Scott Forbes leading, but look at Mayal Backhausen, he's right behind him. There is nothing to separate the two men in first and second as they make their way round this tough, arduous 26.2-mile course. Forbes just reaching to his right-hand side for uh, some refreshments. That may allow Backhausen an opportunity just to temporarily close the gap. Two classy athletes, these guys. Backhausen's marathon PB, 2.37. Bearing in mind he only took up running three years ago. And Forbes, at his peak, was a 29-minute 10K runner. So they both have speed and stamina. And they'll need both here. Only one of them can come out on top. And we shouldn't, at this stage, discount Matt Williamson either. He's not too far behind. The two who are currently setting the pace and Forbes now, interestingly, just takes a yard or two out of Backhouse and just re-seizing the initiative. And this is a duel that looks set to run and run. And the fascinating thing about this race is that Williamson has been on his own, set his own pace and hasn't got involved with the sprint at the front. Could he be saving his best for last? Well, it's not just those battling for the Beauty and the Beast title for 2014 who are going to have to show determination. This is where it gets tough for everybody hoping to claim a finisher's medal here in West Wickham Park. Welcome back to the Heli Hansen Beauty and the Beast in West Wickham Park in Buckinghamshire. The marathon is turning out to be a fascinating race. Scott Forbes leading, but Mayal Backhausen, the Australian right behind him, and Matt Williamson, the Scottish 100K specialist, is still in touch in third place. And he is an athlete who thrives in these off-road races. Running for me is, is my chance to get into the outdoors. It's one of the ways I love to explore and enjoy the outdoors. It's a break away from you know, the busy, hectic lifestyle um, day to day. It's such a good way to clear your head at the end of the day. Um, because again, of some of the distances and things I like to cover, you get to see some absolutely beautiful places. It's beautiful and you're out and you're free and you're with nature and you can, yeah, it, it's, 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 it's beautiful um, and it's a lot of fun and, and running on trails is much more exciting than pounding roads. You get incredible scenery, incredible views, it's challenging, it's always different, you've got to keep your eye on the ball the whole time, so um, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's just quiet time, solace time and uh, you can't really beat it. Well, the moments for reflection will have to wait until after the finish line for those vying for the titles. Remember, there's a half marathon win at stake here. And the man who's been in the driving seat all the way from the start line is Jules Roberts. He's a guy who doesn't do things by halves. In March next year, he's running four and a half thousand kilometers from the Iraqi border to Trafalgar Square, sprinting through the line. He made that look so, so easy. It was, it was pretty tough, but a lot of fun. And it's pretty humid as well today, so I get quite a sweat on. That's been fantastic. Yeah, you've got a lot of families here. You've got a lot of people running in teams. You know, you've got obviously the guys out at the front, but actually full credit to the guys who are at the back who are out for, you know, six plus hours and they're out there slogging around now and, and everyone's cheering each other on. Everyone's encouraging each other. It's a great atmosphere and that's what running's all about. Well, a number of Norwegians have been attracted here to the race by its reputation, including Inga Solheim, who last year led the Walking with the Wounded expedition to the South Pole. I really enjoyed this and it uh, inspired me to do it more. Now that I know what a race like this is, I want to do more and do better next time. I was surprised uh, how many hills I walked because I had actually planned to run up the hills. 
Well, the half marathon's done and dusted, but we're getting towards the nitty gritty end of the full distance. Sharon Dorr leading the women's race, although I'm not sure she knows. I love this event. I won it last year, and I don't know about this year yet. Not till I cross that finish line. I think you're first lady, aren't oh, you? Am at the I? Moment. Oh, sure. While well, Sharon's quest <laughs> for the defence of her title regathers momentum. Paula Downing is not too far behind in second. This could get very close towards the finish. And the early leader, Laura Appleby, still going well in a podium position at the moment. So that's the one, two, three in the women's race. Back with the men, and it's still this fascinating duel between Scott Forbes, the airline pilot, and Mayal Backhausen as they turn for yet another absolutely brutal incline. The Backhausen in the lime green vest has had some unorthodox training in the lead up to this race. He's a civil engineer who has been spending two weeks in the office and two weeks offshore. And apparently the gym offshore was so small that when he had the treadmill set to the hardest incline possible, he was hitting his head on the roof and developed a sore neck. Such is the extent of his dedication to ensure he's in tip-top shape for this race. And he's moving away from Forbes, the long-term leader, having to put his hands on his thighs. Backhausen agonisingly slow here, but crucially, he still has that running momentum. And is this his big break for the Beauty and the Beast title? He has all of a sudden opened up the advantage and he'll try and get the oxygen and the blood pumping round his legs. As we now take a glimpse at Matt Williamson, he's less than half a minute adrift of those at the front and he's at the base of that incline. Remember, he's the 100k specialist, so as Backhausen tries to pull away from Scott Forbes, will the man in second place be dragged into a battle for silver? Well, the body language and the momentum is all with the Australian at this stage. He's out on his own in control. Well, Scott Forbes has shown huge determination in this race so far, but has Matt Williamson timed his charge towards the front to perfection? He is continuing to close on the early leader. This is getting very, very close. So the last lap, the last ascent of the climb they call the beast. And they are almost locked together. Williamson can see Forbes. He can almost reach out and touch him in front. And I wonder whether Forbes will be able to respond with anything when the Scott pulls alongside him in what will surely now be just a matter of seconds. Agony for both these classy distance runners. Williamson, remember, is an international when it comes to 100k circuits. And it shows you just how hard this is, that he is working so, so hard just to keep any kind of running momentum going. He's pulling away from Forbes. He's grimacing, but all his efforts are being rewarded at the moment. He's moved up from third to second. And if Forbes has anything left, he's going to have to start finding it now. Williamson taking advantage of that long descent, trying to get things moving again. Just one big final push required from him. Well, a glorious place for a gruelling race. Scott Forbes not panicking when Williamson went past him. And the Scott now takes his turn to feel the pressure in the closing stages. And while the two men vying for second have begun to tire towards the end, Mayal Backhausen has been the model of consistency every lap around about 32 minutes. Nobody could respond when he went to the front. And he can now afford to luxuriate on his run in to the finish and the title Beauty and the Beast champion 2014. An amazing story for a man who's only been running for the last three years. A glance at the clock, three hours ten, is a brilliant time on a brutal, brutal course such as this. Meanwhile, Scott Forbes, the pilot, he's flying high in second place, takes a glimpse over his shoulder, but Williamson is not to be seen. It was destined to be second place for Forbes, and Williamson 
coming home in third, the position he occupied for so much of the race. Congratulations, you won. A bit of pain in the legs. A little bit, eh? Yeah, it wouldn't be right without a bit of pain, I reckon. How did you find it? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, really nice course, you know. Could be a single track and some decent hills. So good, great one to test yourself and great one to push your abilities and um, good of a challenge, you know. UK's toughest course, apparently, so yeah. And, and yeah, it lives up to it pretty well. It's pretty good. You can't, you can't do this if you don't love hills, that's for sure. See Matt catching me, and then on the, about the fifth lap or fourth lap, I think you went past me in the hill, and I thought, right, what you've got to do is just stay on his heels, stay on his heels. And it was, that's, I have to say, I don't know about you, Matt, but that's one of the hardest races I've ever done. I know it's only a marathon distance, and I normally do sort of ultra stuff like 100k, 100 miles, so this for me was, should have been easy, but I have to say that was brutal, absolutely brutal. It is called a beast. <laughs> Matt, would you agree, having done that? I think it's certainly lived up to the reputation of being a beast. Um, like Scott, I think I'm used to the sort of ultra distance stuff, so uh, today I was making sure I ran up all the hills and I uh, definitely began to take effect later in the race. Great course, I mean, if you want to do something tough, this is the one to do. Well, a very tight tussle in the quest for the men's title, and it proved to be exactly the same as the women battled for top spot. Sharon Dor led from Paula Downing. Appleby had set the early pace, but she still managed to finish within three and a half minutes of Sharon Dor, for whom it was deja vu here at West Wickham Park. A second successive title, and she was absolutely elated. Well, Mayal Backhausen was magnificent in the men's race. Forbes only beating Williamson to second by 24 seconds, and Dor from Downing and Appleby a really entertaining finish to the women's marathon here at West Wickham. It's the event, it's amazing. It's, yeah. it's, I love it, I love the course, it's up and down, I can't do flat. <laughs> I just can't do flat, it's impossible. Brutal, I thought it was, I thought it was. The hills are just killing you. But, uh, oh well. looking forward to some pizza tonight. I just, I just want pizza. <laughs> See you later on. Well, everybody who makes it to the finish line here richly deserves some serious refueling. Beast of a, a course. Oh, I, we've done a, we've done a group of three. So yeah, I only had to do two laps, but my God, them guys that have got to do the full marathon, how, hats off to them. There's a lot of hills and very little nice bits. And then you come through and there's people cheering and you go, yeah, that's the nice bit. Oh, it's just be beastly. Absolutely yeah. tore my uh, calves up, but fantastic. Just really enjoyed it. I'm overwhelmed. It's, I've never done an off-road marathon before. Plenty of flat road marathons, but this, it doesn't compare. It's been a great day's racing, and the beast has certainly lived up to its reputation. Well, for the runners at least, who've been suffering the pain, the blood, sweat and tears. But for me, it's been all about the beauty.